Hopefully the gang members were, were, were angry. I said, Lord, this is just like home. <laughs> <laughs> and God said, you, you have to continue to work, the vision. And then the second funeral was the, the, the funeral home called me in the area that I served. I already been to the superintendent of police in, the, in that area. And, and, and nobody did, he put me on to the, the Scarborough Community Center. So I already know all the people who run the programs. And the Bahamas need to be exposed to some of these programs. I was sorry the minister, I gotta come back to talk to her. A youth justice program, Canada has some great models that they operate community centers. I'm happy the senator here to hear some of these things. And the second one was mass, the, the young man, um, um, suicide. They called me as the pastor, don't even know. I just reached, young man committed suicide. I had to go and to take care of that. Then he said to me, I've given you a vision. And I always remember one of the young boys out of Elizabeth Estate. The Sunday I was going to give up because I couldn't get no support from my church and all of these things. I, I couldn't even understand and I was begging for help. Who I tortured to help me, wasn't helping me, wasn't checking. And I was going right back to East Street Church and sit down. <laughs> I already purpose in my heart that Sunday. I said, Shelly, I can't do this no more. I said, I don't have it, I want one salary. You taking care of the children home, you have to be home to do this. And I, and I said, I cannot. And I went to that service that Sunday. And one of those young men in the middle of our worship time, because we had um, worship time, before they play the ball, they had, they was a discipline we had. And in the middle of that, the Holy Spirit didn't even know the boy was saved. And in the midst of that service, the young man spoke in tongues. The spirit took over that, that meeting in, in, in Marshall Road. And the young man looked at me and he said, God. he said, when God gives a vision past the enemy, he said, God makes the provision. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. When God gives a vision, what you worrying about? Who's going to take care of you? Where the money coming from? I still can't, don't know how to beg. Shall we tell you that? It's totally been a faith journey. But it took a fellow off the street to encourage me mm -hmm. to tell me you cannot throw in the towel. If God gives you a vision, you must continue moving forward. Amen. Yes. I'm saying to you today, whatever God has planned in your heart, whether that is one of serving some elderly person or, or feeding somebody or, or light up the corner where you are. Amen. Yes. Everybody Every one of us, we have a work to do, and God been speaking to some of us, but we are so selfish. We must release ourselves. Lord, what will you have me to do? Born used to bake up all of them cakes and stuff. Born, who are you baking for? Who are you serving? But that's a ministry. Yes, yes. The neighborhood. All the clothes you have, oh, but that's a ministry. You're looking at what somebody else doing. But God, what will you have me to do? Amen. Hallelujah. And so, the commissioning, Bishop Gilly is about to commission the vision, is all laid out. What it means to connect. See, Montesh, Montesh used to do all of my printing, and he excellently retired, now he's taking care of them big people these days. <laughs> you know, he had two, two ministers Montesh worked for, was his priest and me. I could call him any time and he could produce anything for me. I don't know if I could rule him now. <laughs> and you see, K here, K so in nine years as my, my secretary in Blue Room. And I could go to battle. You see all these people here? Battle. Proven. And they're going to help the Bahamas, but this vision is bigger than the Bahamas. I'm not here physically. But I got the call from Apple's call, I am back. Well, Apple had the struggles, you know, still struggling. These guys are not perfect, you know, they still have challenges every day to meet. <coughs> but he said, I am back. And we said, we have to keep the vision alive and we are now ready to move. And my heart 
leap for joy because I needed two to three years to kind of settle in my new assignment. And I can tell you as I stand here tonight that God is faithful with a transition that has been unbelievable, a support of a local church that has been unbelievable. We are pastoring the mother church for the church of God. Don't mind the fancy name to run to New Covenant Cathedral. We are pastoring the mother church of the church of God of prophecy in Canada. God has a strategically placed in the mother church with a membership of over 500 and more than 300 coming every Sunday in Canada. This is what God is doing. And so we have to make sure that the foundation was laid before we start to, to move and to do other things. But now is the time yes. that we must move forward to the glory of God. Come here, my wife. <laughs> every move I made. Mean, my son turned 20. She was in the hospital and I had to leave her after she was, after I saw she Lord, and I had to head to Project Time because those boys were with Good woman. When it was time to go to Crooked Island, yeah. Ten years. She was there. Of all the daughter laws. None of them get by a mosquito, but she got it. <laughs> no, the no. first one to go into Crooked Island, I don't mind you see all them dressing up there. Don't mind, don't mind that door in it. I'm glad you're here. I never door a bean yet. <laughs> Now she Long Island, so she knows this. Well, they don't understand what this is all about. She believe me. What, what I am saying to you is, and what I like about my wife, the same way we were in ministry in the Bahamas, working as a team, uh, it's the same way. And the people are amazed. They have never seen a husband and wife team in ministry. And they are supporting us 100. Mr. Bo and Sister Boyne, when I email them and they say, I come in again. I said, you know, Cousin Boyne, she said, are you sure everything all right? I said, I said Sister Boyne, everything is all right. I have mothers, you know, mothers who are concerned. You're making sure you come and you make sure your house in order. That's the, that's, that's the heart of a mother. Concerned that even with my movement, that everything is okay. And I assured her that everything is okay. And I thank God. And now you are going to be commissioned tonight. All of them, them they have a boy. I can't call no more band to be me. There's plenty of them. <laughs> but, but, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Everybody, I need everybody to be a part of this vision. And let me tell you why, when this vision was cemented. This vision was cemented. Timothy and Dion was there in St. Martin. I was invited to a Caribbean conference out of Toronto and Bishop Martin, the Caribbean representative, said to me even at the assembly time, didn't even know that I was writing my book, my first book, Shape the Future Now. And the, the thought in this book is not so much about who I am. I did that for international purpose. The thought in this book is that we must connect the generation that parents must be given the skills and the tools to survive because our homes are, are in trouble. Our youth must participate. They must be a part of the decision-making process. We must understand what is happening to them. And we must now help our children that they will get back in Sunday school. That's why John's um, Sunday school is in the book because our children don't go to Sunday school no more. All of these things, are, we must go back to basics. If we are going to have a future that is secured, we have to strengthen the family. We have to strengthen our homes. We have to strengthen our homes. That's where the problem is. Home problems. How are we going to do it? Through nurturing and caring. Regardless of what kind of family, whether you're single, whatever kind of family, there's a principle that all of us need. Nature, 
care and love. If I can help somebody pass, then I know. Mr. Gailey, you're now commissioning us. My presentation is over. You now have to read that book. I did not bring that book for you not to read. <laughs> Feel my heart. The mission statement is there. And then I have one more thing to do. We have Brother Palmer here. I want to recognize him. And then we'll be ready to go. Really? Bless us, please. Thank you, my teenage friend and my roommate. <laughs> Bless the Lord. My seminary, yes. my seminary partner and roommate. Though I wasn't here at your beginning, I joined you when we came in Elizabeth State, and it's been a blessing. But it's important for Bishop Benaby and Shelley to know that we support them in every way, not just in our service, but also our resources, our gifts, and our talents. Brothers and sisters in Christ, friends, today we commission Project Time for the work for which it was launched 20 years ago. In this act of commissioning the church and all believers present acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and he alone calls people to do good works in his name. And by our presence we pledge to support Project Time as Christ's instrument, of peace and the channel of his grace in our land and abroad. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, we commission Project Time to go into the inner cities, over the hill, the ghettos and urban communities, and mentor young men and women for Jesus. Where there's hatred, take love. Where there's violence, take peace. Where there's poverty, take industry. Where there's despair, take hope. Where there's loneliness, take friendship. Where there's idleness, take a vision. Where there's ignorance, take education. Where there's failure, take excellence. Where there's unfairness, take justice. Where there's hurt, take healing. Where there's abandonment, take ownership. Where there's filth, take godliness. Where there's bondage, take liberty. Wherever there is a human life, fill it with the gospel and the power of the Holy Ghost. And now the blessings. Father in me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 One, two.